Have you ever added up all the money you spent on cheaper knives, only to find out that you could have bought that more expensive knife after all? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And by the way, if you answered that question with a yes, slap the like button like it owes you money because it just might. You're watching Grail or Garbage, the series where I systematically and categorically rank and review knives like this Best Tech or Netta. Designed by Kombu, manufactured by Best Tech, and put to the test by yours truly. You see, I've spent the last two weeks carrying this knife, holding it in the hand, feeling it in the pocket. I haven't batoned with it. It's not what I do. I know there's going to be some woodsmen out there that are disappointed like that should have been a knife that we feather sticked with. Sorry, it's not what I do. Here's what I do. I rank and review these knives to give you the context that you need to determine if it's something that you should add to your pocket. Now that I've done asking the tough questions, the only question left to answer is, is the best tech Ornetta a grail? Or is it garbage? All right, guys. So this is the Best Tech Ornetta mid-tier line. And just so we don't get it confused with the low end or with the high end, I'm going to go ahead and post the model number for this specific one up in the corner. All righty. So guys, if you haven't seen a grail or garbage before, it's a ranking system. Categorically and systematically, we rank these knives based on five categories. Each category is worth the max of up to 10 points. And the categories are materials, ergonomics, fidget factor, the lock, and then of course, fit and finish. After which we'll add up all the scores and then place it on our leaderboard, which currently looks like this. So yeah, as you can tell, we've done more than a few of these rankings, so we've got the context we need to make sure that we get this right. And the reason why I'm not actually doing this in the same video that I will eventually be doing the high-end Ornetta is because something that I found out in the last couple of weeks is that while these are the same model name, at the end of the day, they are quite different. Let's start off with the first category. The first category is materials. Now, materials is heavily weighed against how much it costs because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good the materials are if they cost more than what they're worth. If they're way too extravagant, even if it has high-end materials, it's not going to score as well as, say, a lesser expensive knife with better materials would. It's all about the value proposition. So, what materials are we working with? Well, we have G10 handle scales with titanium backspacer, titanium pocket clip, an N690 blade, which is a very well-rounded out mid-tier steel. It's, it's very mid-tier. Uh, it's got great corrosion resistance. It's super easy to sharpen. I personally would have rather seen 14C28N, but you know what? Bowler N690 ain't too shabby. Aside from that, we have a single-sided captive pivot, shadow box steel liners, and it is, of course, a liner lock. So with all of that in mind, uh, I really like the fact that we have a titanium pocket clip and titanium backspacer. The backspacer is key for me because I want my knives to stay sharp. I don't want junk and garbage from my pockets to impact this blade. And while an open back design is easier to clean and maintain, that's not generally something that I worry about or have had issues with in the past. So I'd much rather have this backspacer there blocking debris from running into that edge. Um, the N690 is one of those steels which is very, very serviceable. It's easy to maintain and upkeep because if you do use this as a user and if you're getting the mid-tier line, I'm assuming that you are, then that's very important. So recently, they dropped the price on this. You see, it was about 100 bucks before. Now it's $89. $89. I'm, I'm really stoked on that price. I saw that on Blade HQ, and if it's the same on White Mountain Knives, 
Uh, you could probably use one of the very, very many uh, creator discount codes out there to get 10% off and then, you know, make it more like 80 bucks instead of 89. How cool is that? Uh, for the money, I think that's a great value. You get titanium, you get a decent amount of G10. And at the end of the day, N690 for that price range is definitely not out of bounds by any stretch. And so for those reasons, the Ornetta is getting a very good eight out of 10 for materials. Now the second category is ergonomics. Does it feel good in the hand? Is it something that's comfortable to hang on to? Can you bear down on it? Can you switch your grip up? Uh, yeah, all of those pretty well. And the there's no extra sharp edges that shouldn't be there. The thing about the G10 is, is that unlike with titanium, it's a lot harder to get sharper edges. It's really easy to knock those down. And the extra little design pieces right there actually do kind of help with the grip. Not that you need it because G10 is naturally grippy. Uh, you do get some jimping up here at the top, um, but I will say this you don't get nearly enough. Um, and this is a big suggestion to the, the designers out there, especially, you know, and, and here's the thing, jimping at the top only makes sense if you can put your finger on it. So this has the tiniest amount of jimping up here at the top. And so your thumb will land there and the jimping itself isn't very deep. And that's kind of disappointing. Uh, for a guy, I have average size hands, but if you're looking at glove sizes, it's a large to extra large. The jimping should have gone out as far as this deployment hole, and that would have been perfect. If you're going to put a finger cut out here, understand that people will use it. And when they do, you're going to want to have jimping where their thumb rests so that they have that extra grip when they provide support from the thumb. It's not that it's uncomfortable, it's definitely not. And the edges on the spine of the blade are well rounded off as well, which means that they were thinking of comfort. Not saying that this is a hard use knife or a knife that you should bear down on, but if you do choose this grip, which they gave you the option for, you should have that extra traction right there for those finer detail uh, jobs. I would have been okay had they extended it even you know a little bit far out because then I could have said, well, you know what? Most of your finger has traction. But at this point, the thumb is only getting that on the very heel of the thumb. So there's no real benefit to choking up back here because you don't get that much control and the jimping itself is not very deep. So what little is there isn't really effective. And you know, that's just one of the disappointments that I ran into. Aside from that, it is comfortable in a reverse grip and you could even put your pinky in that slot and that works too. It's not the most hand meltingly good ergonomic design that I've ever felt, but it's definitely not bad or uncomfortable. Uh, this is not something that I would baton with. Uh, that's not what I do with liner locks, uh, but it's definitely serviceable. And whether if you don't choke up, uh, you know, it's absolutely fine. And if you do choke up, it's fine as well. It's, it, it just would have been better with some extra jimping right there. It's, it's definitely better than many knives that I've handled given that the G10 does feel somewhat contoured, um, but it's not the best. And for those reasons, it's going to get a seven out of 10 for ergonomics. Now, the next category, as I often say, is my favorite. And it's one of those that really allows me to experience the knife. We're talking about fidget factor. Is it something that you want to play with? Is it easy to get out of your pocket? Does it tire your thumb out? Um, you know, how good is the action? How's the detent? Does the lock get in the way? So on and so forth. Because it's not just about how many deployment options. No, it's also about how crisp is that detent? You know, does it feel smooth on the return? Things like that make a difference. And especially balance, which is not something that I often talk about, but it does actually make a difference. So we are going to mention it today. The balance on here to start is actually really good. The balance point is going to be right at that finger choil or right at that finger cutout rather. And that's good because that's where you're going to be getting most of your control on this knife. Uh, the, so with the balance being good, you can do these nice little overhand flips. And of course that's very satisfying. The blade itself is running on bearings and it's not drop shut at all, but if you give it a little bit of encouragement, it goes back into its home with no problem. And then of course, as you can see, the detent is not super stiff, but it is crisp enough that when you go ahead and push button that it flies out without any issue at all. And so it's really easy to just mindlessly do this and then maybe, you know, one of these 
And I find myself doing that quite a bit with this knife. In fact, this knife has grown on me a lot just based on how often I have fidgeted with it. And I'm not disappointed in that at all. It's quite fun to fidget with. It's not the most fidget fun knife that I've held, but it's good. With that liner lock being easy to easy to access, it's nicely scalloped out on the inside there, which makes it nice and comfortable to release and engage the lock. Again, it's not the most amazing thing ever, but it still gets a respectable score of 7 out of 10 for the fidget factor. Moving on to the lock. Now, I already did tease that it is a liner lock, and let's see how good that liner lock is. Uh, we can tell that it's about a 25 to close to 30% lockup. There is no blade play left, right, up, and down. No pivot lash that I can feel, and it is smooth on the shut. As far as the alignment goes, it's dead center, and there's just no issue with the lock. But at the end of the day, it is a liner lock, which is by far and large not my favorite. If you prefer a frame lock, you'll have to wait for me to come out with the rank video for the premium version, which is a frame lock. But we're talking about the mid-tier line. Now, it makes a lot of sense to me that they would make this a, a liner lock instead of a frame lock because it is the cheaper version. Um, but it's also a liner lock and liner locks are not the most sturdy things ever. So that does actually reduce its use case scenario, which is a little bit of a bummer. With all that being said, it's still a very respectable one. It's not like this lock is going to fail on you under normal, ordinary use. Again, no batoning. And as long as you don't baton with it, you'll probably be A-OK -okay without having to worry about any knife lock failures. The lockup on this is supremely good, especially for a liner lock. There's no lock stick. It's easy to access and comfortable to use. And so for those reasons, it's going to get a 6 out of 10. A liner lock scoring higher on here is really difficult. Uh, because at the end of the day, it shouldn't be that hard to make a decent liner lock. They're a very simple design and they do their job. They're just not something you can depend on if you do end up needing it for a harder use scenario because that liner fails easier than a frame. With all that being said, it gets a 6 out of 10 for the lock. And finally, we're on to probably my second favorite category, which is fit and finish. This is where we talk about the design language and how well executed it was. You know, was it manufactured correctly? And Best Tech, I gotta say, has been doing a fantastic job at making sure that these knives are indeed manufactured correctly. Now I will say this, they followed the design lines almost to a T from the premium model. That's this guy right here. This is what the original designer had in mind. And I have a feeling that Best Tech said, well, you know what? People like that knife, but a lot of people aren't in the market for a $280 to $300 knife. Let's make something a bit more affordable, a little bit easier to reach. But we, you know what? We want to keep the design lines that they like so much. So we're going to add in the Zebra Stripe G10, and we're going to keep the little cutouts. And you know what? Instead of a frame lock, maybe we'll do a liner lock instead. But you know, we'll give them this titanium pocket clip and titanium backspacer. So that should go ahead and make them feel like they're getting a good knife. And I got to say that ultimately, it does feel like a good knife. It feels like they care with this knife. And that's something that should be mentioned. I will say that I would, if it was me, I would have gotten rid of these little cutouts right here because unlike on titanium, that doesn't stand out. And maybe it's just because they went ahead and zebra striped the crap out of these scales, which I wasn't initially a big fan of. And it's not that I absolutely love it now. It's actually just that I don't hate it anymore. Initially, when I got this, the zebra stripes just reminded me of bad 70s or 80s underwear. And once you see that, you just can't unsee it, okay? But my opinion has changed on this. I don't hate the zebra stripe anymore. I actually think that it's a nice, cool aesthetic. And while I would naturally prefer that these scales be all one color, or at least be, you know, have some extra accents there, it's not a big bummer for me. Again, I would have actually done away with these cutouts because they're shallow, they feel shallow, they don't add a, net, a, a very great amount of grip. And it does kind of, it just doesn't fit with G10 for me, personal opinion. Now the mid-tier line, whether you get the zebra stripe or the, I think there's another one that's red and black, uh, they went with this brass, copperish, titanium anodized pocket clip. 
I would have loved to have seen seen some hardware matching. I, I'm not a I'm not opposed to it being a different color, but I want it to match the other hardware. And they did that to make it stand out. Like, hey, guess what? We gave you titanium, and this knife is a lot less expensive. But you know, it came with titanium on the expensive one too. Um, if you're going to make this a different color than the other hardware completely, at least match up the backspacer, which they also didn't do. The backspacer matches the rest of the hardware, but it doesn't match the pocket clip. And for the life of me, I just can't figure out why. Um, it's very well manufactured. It lines up really well. It's very fidget friendly. Uh, they managed to make a less expensive version of a more expensive knife, and they did it well. I'm a big fan of the fact that we have this big old fuller right here and the slim deployment hole, which makes it really easy to fidget with and it's very comfortable to access. This wouldn't be the first knife that I'd reach for uh, when I go for an EDC, but it also wouldn't be the last. And for those reasons, it's going to get a 7 out of 10 for fit and finish. So finally, it's time for us to add up all the categories and see where this knife landed. For materials, it got an 8, ergonomics is a 7, fidget factor is a 7, the lock is a 6, and then fit and finish is also a 7, which gives us a total of 30, uh, 35. Now, if you're looking at the top of the leaderboard, you might see that I actually went ahead and edited what scores mean what. So I just adjusted it a little bit. 0 to 25 is garbage, 26 to 34 is now a low recommend. 35 to 40 is now high recommend and 41 to 50 is still grail status. So this coming in at 35 puts it just, just barely within the high recommend. A lot of that has to do with the price tag. Had this been over a hundred dollars, like let's say 120 bucks, it might've been more of a low recommend because for that price point, you can get some better materials, but currently sitting at $89, uh, yeah, no, this is a great knife in that price range. It's going to compete very well with other knives similarly priced. And at that point, it's not just the materials, it's also the fit and finish. To get a kombu design knife at $89 that performs this good is a steal. And I think that most people would be very happy with this knife. I know that I am, and it surprised me in the end because originally I was going to give it a lower score. But again, this is why I don't just score and rank knives right away because I have to have time to experience them. I have to have time to really get a feel for what the designer was going for and how well executed was the manufacturing on it. This is a good knife. And guess what? If you're like me and you don't like the Anno on here, it's time to do some custom work. You could go ahead and take this apart pretty easily and then do your own Anno work on the backspacer and the clip and that could come out looking really cool. Don't like the zebra stripe? No worries, that's what they make Rit die for. For crying out loud, G10 is very modifiable, and this would be a really fun knife to do it on. If you have one of these and you're considering doing that, hit me up in the comment section down below. Other than that, guys, that's all I've got for you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, there's a button for you too. And if you want to make sure to be here when I rank the titanium version, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Rochambeau. I'll catch you on the flip side.